Hello everybody, welcome to the vlog. My name is Daniel, and I know it's been forever since you've seen a video from me. The children don't even know what you look like anymore. But now that I'm on winter break, I finally have the time to shoot and post a video on my DJing escapades for the past four months. Back in early August 2014, I began an Indiegogo campaign to raise the funds to buy some equipment in order to become a ballroom DJ for collegiate competitions up and down the Northeast. I honestly had no idea how successful my campaign would be. I set the goal at $2,000, and I thought that I would get enough of that $2,000 to get me started. Maybe I would have to invest some of my own personal money in order to buy the amount of speakers that I wanted and so on and so forth. What I didn't realize was just how popular this campaign would become. Here are some statistics, thanks to my lovely iPad notes thing here. The campaign ran from August 7th until October 6th, 2014. In that time, there were 30 funders that contributed in order to raise a total of $2,560 out of the $2,000 goal, which means that we raised 128% of the goal. Absolutely flabbergasted. I had no idea that we would get to that amount of money, and what that money has allowed me to buy are four JBL EM515 XT speakers, four stands, a Behringer mixer, a microphone for an MC, and 10 50-foot mic cables. None of this would have been possible without those backers, so massive, massive thank you to the following people. Amanda Ashcraft, Caroline Ventola, Michelle Avery, Aaron Redmond, Mayo Allenden, Jacob Berman, Zachary Bordenaro, Jen Crown and Matt Shimizu, Bauer McClave, Leah Beckman, Emily Moss, Ryan Lemaire, Robert Abud, Madison Stribling, Grant Greeley, Zach Germain, Illy Zislin, Christoph Restif, Josh Shin, Carol Kalinowski, Martina Lee, Matt Sorrentino, Steve Torres, Yuri Min, Andrew Burstein, David Kung, Nicole Barron, and to the anonymous donors. Without your help, none of anything that has happened over the past four months would have been possible. So my deepest, most heartfelt thank you to every single one of you. A quick side note, I've sent out most of the Indiegogo perks that people signed up for, whether they're playlists or commentaries or something of that sort. If you haven't gotten your Indiegogo perk yet, you should have received an email from me um, with a Google survey asking you what style you want your playlist to be in and whatnot. Make sure to check your email, especially the spam inbox as well, just to make sure that you got that email. And if you haven't received it, please email me at thedancinggrad at gmail.com and I'll be able to work with you on that. When I started my campaign, I thought the absolute earliest I would begin DJing would be spring 2015. I would need enough time to get familiar with my equipment, to download my music and to edit all of my music, and I needed to get all the proper paperwork and everything out of the way first. Here I sit four months later with six DJing events under my belt, at least half of which were completely unexpected boons that just kind of fell into my lap. Let's go in order. First off, the Harvard Beginners Competition in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The competition was held in mid-October, which meant that the timeline was pretty difficult to deal with. A lot of things could have gone wrong, but I thank Kevin Huang and the rest of the Harvard Ballroom team for putting their faith in me in making their competition a success. The day was the very first competition for a lot of the competitors in the newcomer category, and the competition went up to the gold level. There was also a showcase at the end of the day that featured amateur open couples in all four of the styles, in addition to a rookie vet team match that was insane. I was lucky enough to have Cloud Prey unexpectedly tape some of that team match, as well as me in action at the DJ deck. Here's that clip. <laughs> There it is, your fabulous job at the swing. Wonderful job, Pepper. Well, I guess there's no suspense about what the last dance is, so let's put it out there. The polka! Okay. One comment from the voice of reason, because somebody told me to say this, remember safety counts. So have as much fun as you can, but we have yet to have an injury today. Let's not start now. All right, everybody. Judges, please recall seven couples from this one heat, and our dance is polka. <laughs> Oh, 
Thank you again to Cloud Cray for unexpectedly taking that clip. You can find out more about Cloud by going to his blog, uh, the link for which I will put down in the box below. The second competition was a complete surprise. Those of you who've been on my channel in the past or even know who I am in real life know that one of my favorite competitions in the entire competitive season is DCDI. The competition is held annually at the University of Maryland College Park. I also did a vlog review of DCDI 2013 last year on my channel. If you want to take a look at that, make sure to click on my face right here, that annotation box. Lovely. Yay. Fast forward to this year. Nicole and I were planning on doing DCI 2014, and I was all set. I had my plane tickets down, my plane tickets back, and everything was going to be copacetic. The Wednesday, before the competition, I get a call from one of the organizers who's one of my really good friends, Eileen. And the first words out of her mouth were, we have a DJ emergency, what are you doing this weekend? Turns out that the DJ that was set for DCI 2014 had backed out at the very last minute, so they needed somebody to fill in for him. I was terrified. DCDI is one of the largest competitions on the East Coast. It's a full two days with a ton of rounds in each style, including a very full Saturday night session with all the open couples, including some open shows. Opportunities like this don't roll around very often though, so I figured, you know what? What's life without a little challenge? As soon as everything was all set, I canceled my flights, I booked a rental car so I can bring all my equipment down, I started pumping up my music collection with as many songs as I could find, and then I DJ DCDI 2014. So we're here at DCDI 2014 and uh, Newcomer Rhythm is on the floor with Rumba. Nice. Really having fun here. Um, yeah. Great opportunity to play some of my favorite songs. So here's one of them, Tango and Harlow by Touch and Go. A really good American Rumba. Nice song. Especially when it comes in right now. Oh, wow. I was still going to compete though, because DCDI, again, is one of my favorite competitions. So for the Saturday night open session, I enlisted the help of my friend Eugene Schwartz, who took over the deck for the rounds before and right after the open smooth semi and final. The dancing went pretty great. We got third out of 14 couples, which completely blew my mind. All in all, DCDI was an amazing experience. Thank you to Ricky and Eileen and the rest of BAM for having me. That was a lot of fun. Third up was the Tufts Ballroom competition, which was right in my own neighborhood of Medford, Massachusetts. Tufts was not nearly as large as DCDI, so some of the pressure was off, but a lot of the couples that were there for Tufts were also there for Harvard Beginners. So I had to make sure to plump up my collection and make sure that the dancers weren't dancing to simply the same songs that they danced to at Harvard Beginners. All in all, the day was a massive success. Thank you very much to Sky, Claire, and the rest of the Tufts University team for having me there. The next two events were very unexpected. First up was the Dane Holiday Ball 2014. Dane, or the Dance Board Academy of New England, is a very large studio located in Brookline, Massachusetts. Massive floor, great instructors, fun parties. The Holiday Ball was a year-end event that celebrated the successes of students by having a few competitive rounds in each of the styles, as well as show dances by students and teachers and professionals. The students' competitive rounds and their performances throughout the entire day were critiqued by Eva Pakshana. I'd gotten an email from the studio's owners, Marcio and Sori D'Souza, asking me if I'd be interested in DJing the event, which is kind of out of my wheelhouse. I was all set to DJ competitions, and I know how the company is supposed to work in terms of song length and what dance comes after what. Studio parties and especially showcases are things that I wasn't very used to dealing with. Marcio and Sayori worked with me though to get me all the music that I needed, and the event, at least from my perspective, was a big success. Thank you Marcio and Sayori and Dane for having me, I had a blast. Next up was the Bolera Holiday Showcase. Bolera is a ballroom studio located in Newton, Massachusetts, owned by Basil Isayev and Helena Apala and managed by Sonia Sedova. I got a Facebook message from my friend Nellie Martin, alerting me to Sonia's status about Bolera's urgent, desperate need for a ballroom DJ at the last minute. So I contacted Sonia, and the rest is history. Thank you to Basil, Liana, Sonia, and the rest of the Bolera family for having me. Last up was the Fred Astaire in Dedham Square Holiday Ball and Banquet. It was through conversations with the studio's owner, Renzo Aida, back in the day when we were both open amateur smooth competitors, that my idea to become a ballroom DJ really started to crystallize. We were both sick and tired of the smooth music that was being played for us on the circuit. Standard Foxtrots and Viennese waltzes in place of smooth Foxtrots and Viennese waltzes. Temples all over the place. Music that hasn't been updated since the 1980s. So when the opportunity first arose, for Lorenzo to use me as a ballroom DJ, he jumped at the chance. I think this event was literally one of my first bookings back in September or October. The year-end event included an intra-studio team match between the Reds, the Greens, and the Blues, and their energy was absolutely through the roof. 
loads of cheering and loads of yelling, very energetic dancing. The night ended with a lovely banquet full of delicious food and shows by Philip Kudrachev and Ashley Goldman. Thank you, Renzo and Fad Stedham, for having me. That was the first four months of my being a DJ. I am floored by all these opportunities that I've been given, and I hope that I've been contributing in a positive way to the competitive collegiate circuit. This is only the beginning, though. I have a few comps lined up for spring 2015, and possibly a few more beyond that. I'll be updating more as things become more official. And I also have my sights set on a few improvements to make the DJing even better in the future. My music collection is constantly being updated almost every single day with the latest music that I'm finding on Spotify and on the radio waves and whatnot. I'm also hoping to buy a subwoofer. One of the largest um, constructive criticisms that I've been getting about my DJing so far is that it's very difficult to feel the bass through the floor and keep my, my speakers up on stands. So a subwoofer would be the perfect addition to that arrangement. I'm also interested in buying a computer dedicated to the DJ business so that I'm not relying on my own personal computer for all that work. That's it for this vlog. Thank you for watching. I'm hoping that now that I'm on break and beyond that, now that I'm out of coursework in school, I'm going to be able to keep up with these vlogs a little bit more faithfully in the future. But for now, thank you for watching, and until the next time, bye!